Rub up your engines! Well, they can't say these electric vehicles aren't handy. There was a doctor in Austin, Texas, who performed a vasectomy using the power from his Rivian R1T pickup truck. It was the electric pickup trucks, and they got a lot of power in it. He had enough plugs that he could run his air conditioning and run his office and do a vasectomy on a guy when the power went off. Dr. Christopher Yang of Austin, he had a customer who was going to do a vasectomy on the power one. The guy says, look, I can't reschedule. Can't you just get an extension cord or something, plug it into your truck? So he did, and he did it. There was no mention on how successful it was. He might have been in too much of a hurry. I hope this guy waited for the anesthetic to take effect before he did the deed and gave the guy a vasectomy. Lux says, I got a car from my teenage son, an 05 Lexus ES30 with 268,000 miles. It runs fine, but after I drove it about 20 miles, PO420 and PO430 codes come out. I didn't think both banks would go out at the same time. It seems like the flex pipe is leaking under the car. Could that cause it? It sure could. The flex pipe is on the bottom the transverse engine, so they go back and forth a little where the exhaust is against it and it would break, so there's a flex pipe. You put your hand under there and you hear and feel exhaust, replace the flex pipe. Any muffler shop can cut it off and weld a new one on. Do that, because if that is leaking, then that screws up the data to the oxygen sensors and all bets are off. You'll get all kinds of codes. Fix that first. That could easily fix the whole thing. Once air gets into the system and the exhaust system leaks, the data going to the oxygen sensors will go squirrely, the computer will try to compensate for it, and you'll get those codes all the time. Could be as simple as just doing that. And don't go to the dealer, they'll screw you over. We need to replace the whole exhaust system, blah, blah. They can cut the flex pipe off, weld a new one on. There's aftermarket ones that people make that just weld them on. It's not that complex. Surgeon says, should you change fuel filters on Toyota hybrids? I got a Toyota the Oris 1.8 hybrid. They're a conventional filter, small one inside the gas tank. Now, what do you think? I live in Germany, the gas is good, but should I change it? Well, here's the thing. Any filter eventually can get dirty, right? Now, from what I read, the Germans have an immaculate fuel supply. If there's no dirt in your fuel supply, it won't clog the filter because the filter's in the gas tank with the pump. Filters will eventually clog up. That's just a fact if you get any kind of dirt or stuff in it. But since the swines who build them, almost all of them now, have the fuel filter in inside the gas tank. So you got to take it all apart and some of them you can't buy the filter. You got to buy the pump and the filter assembly. So it's expensive pain in the butt. Now for ages when I was young we can't. The filter was either right by the carburetor or on the firewall when I went fuel injector where you could easily get to it, take it off, put it on. So yeah you want to change it every 50, 60,000 miles or so right just to be sure. But today really the pain in the butt that it is most people don't. Now, if you live in a place with a bad fuel supply, you're screwed. I know people who live in like India where the fuel supply is horrible and they tell me, oh man, we got to be changing the fuel filter all the time. And they'll end up putting a special fuel filter under the hood, a water remover and fuel filter, one of those big ones like the diesels have, so they don't have any problems. They got to change that filter all the time. And some of them, they just have to remove the filter in the tank because it will clog all the time. So they just leave that one out and then they put a big one under the hood that they can check and change all the time. If you have bad fuel, you got to change it. Well, it can, Germany and in the United States too, most fuels are pretty good. So people don't generally bother with it because it's such an expensive pain to change the filter. If it runs okay, people just leave them alone. Lady Hearn says, my AC only cools on the fire passenger vent. I got a 97 Tacoma. Guy said the compressor was locked up. So he left it for eight years. I filled it up, vacuumed it up first, didn't show any leaks. But the only thing blowing cold is the passenger. Not cold, but cool. Any suggestions? I didn't replace the evaporator. I thought I might have gotten air in the system. You think you got air in the system, regardless. There's one thing you got to do. You got to get a vacuum pump. Because you said, I tried to purge the line and I only got dye. First, you got to evacuate the whole system get everything out. If there's air in the system, that screws everything up, all bets are off. So evacuate the system, then fill it with a factory load by exact weight and pray, because it's a 97. And if the guy hadn't used it for eight years, who knows what shape the system is in. It could just be it's all shot inside. If I were you, change the dryer, then evacuate it, then fill it up and pray that something else isn't wrong. A lot of times it will work, but you can't get air in the system. You have to get a vacuum pump and suck it all out first. You can't just guess because even, you know, a tiny amount of air will screw the whole system up. Sean and Sales says, what full size vehicle should I buy? I got no 600 Honda Accord, 180,000 miles. I want to buy a newer vehicle and my max is 30 grand. I'm considering a 2017 to 18 
Buick LaCrosse all-wheel. I want all-wheel drive because I live in north central Pennsylvania. What should I buy that will last 10 years, 200,000 miles? Well, I wouldn't buy the Buick because they're generally not going to last that long. But I got a question. Why do you need all-wheel drive? You drove that Honda 200-something thousand miles and it's only front-wheel drive. Didn't it work fine? If you stick away from all-wheel drive vehicles, you're going to get a better deal, better price, better gas mileage. Now, I mean, that's just how it goes. Used car prices are up. I would never buy that vehicle if you want to get that kind of mileage. I would stick strictly to Toyotas and Hondas if you were trying to get that kind of gas mileage all-wheel drive. And you're going to find they're expensive, but they will last, and they're the best made ones that your pops are going to get. I would not get a Buick. I've never seen the Buicks last that long. You know, they're not even going to be making Buicks in the future other than they're going to be electric cars. I wouldn't touch that, especially if you're going to spend that kind of money for a vehicle. Look for a good used Toyota or Honda. You'll be happier. Whatever you like in Toyota and Honda that's all-wheel drive. It doesn't matter what kind. Depends on the size. You want a RAV4? Do you want a bigger one like a Highlander or a Sequoia? What do you want? Just decide. Just stick to Toyotas and Hondas if you want them to last a long time. Byzantic says, I got a Chevy Cruze 2014 with 165,000 miles. It was running and I noticed low oil pressure light came on. The engine slowed down and shut off. Now I try to start it, but it won't do anything. What do you think happened? Okay, let's pray that your car just stalled out, because when your car stalls out, the oil pressure light will come on, and that you need a new battery or alternator. They can be tested easily, right? But in the worst case scenario, let's say you try to jump start the car now because the battery's dead. You try to jump start it and still nothing. You turn the key and the engine won't spin over. Probably locked up the engine. Those cruisers have crappy little engines in them. And if your oil light came on first, no oil pressure, and you really had no oil pressure, the engine will soon lock up because the top of the engine will run dry, the cam will lock up, and the engine will just freeze. Then it will never start again. In that case, you get a long extension bar and a socket. Put it on the front of the engine. Try to turn it over, and if you can't turn it, it just clunk. You can't move it at all. Or it turns a little, then locks up. That means your engine's locked up, and it's toasting. A cruise with that kind of mileage on, it's time to go to the junkyard. I wouldn't put another engine in it. The junky cars, the engines are crap, and with that kind of mileage, it's probably all worn out anyways. I would just say goodbye to the car and never buy another cruise. In my case, I would never buy another GM product. They make a lot of garbage these days. I would stay away from them. BRH 804 says, I have a 2008 Nissan Armada. The brakes are dragging. The brake pedal's firm, but all wheels are dragging when I jack them up. All four calipers and rotors have been replaced. All four calipers release pressure when you open the bleeding port. All right, well, generally there's two things can do that. One is if your brake master cylinder is sticking on, when you let go of the pedal, it's supposed to release the pressure. If that's not releasing the pressure, they'll all get pressure and then they'll stick. Simple. New brake master cylinder. If the brake booster has also gone bad, that's what the brake master bolts do, it won't release pressure and it'll do the same thing. So you could check that. It's normally one of those two. Now, if it isn't that, they do have anti lock brakes that are computer run that are very complex systems. You could have a problem in that. But generally, when those do something like that, they'll trip a code. You'll have an ABS code, get it scanned for ABS codes. And if there aren't any, if you find there are no codes, odds are it's the brake master cylinder or the booster. Because because they don't code those or mechanical parts, and if they go bad, it doesn't know that a mechanical part is bad. It only knows if there's an electronic part that's gone bad. It says, should I buy a used 2019 Audi Q3? What is your recommendation? Here's what I recommend. I'd never buy an Audi. They're in those money pits. Let's say you're in Germany, where they're made better. Ones they're made in other parts of the world are a lot crappier. There are mechanics who know how to work on them in Europe. A lot of people drive them, and they can be okay, decent, fun vehicles to drive. I'd never buy a high mileage one, but you say it's got uh, 50,000 kilometers, so that's not that many miles, 30,000 miles or something. So it could still go for quite some time. I would never buy one in the United States. Believe me, I'd work on them. I know what piles of nonsense they are, how much money the parts cost on them. But in Europe, it's a different story. The parts are cheaper. There's more mechanics who are used to working on in there, hey, if you can get a decent price, meh, maybe it'd be an okay vehicle. But not in the United States. If you're talking about being in the United States, you're just throwing your money away if you buy one of those. Stephen W. says, I get shaking and a vibration between 35 and 60 miles an hour. Got no weight Lexus ES350 with 221,000 miles. It shakes when I accelerate between 35 and 60. It only does it at those speeds. My tires and balance CV axles look like they're good. There's no leaking fluid. Hell, have a guy like me check the transmission and motor mounts. It's old enough that they could 
could be worn a little and it'll do that. Pray at something like that because if the tires and wheels are fine and the axles are fine, that would mean shake and vibrate between 35 and 60. If it's the whole vehicle, not just the steering wheel, the whole vehicle shakes, that would mean your transmission starting to go out. Even Lexus is wear out eventually and that's how they do it. When you're going 35 to 60, you accelerate hard. If it's really vibrating, it's internal wear on the transmission. And once you get over 60 and they're in a different gear, they stop vibrating. Especially if it doesn't vibrate when you go from 60 to 80, it's probably internal to the transmission in the lower gears, which is a lot of money to fix. But like I say, check the transmission mounts and motor mounts. Maybe you're lucky they're just broken or torn. You get a jack, put it under there, jack it up, see if they separate and they're broken and replace the broken one. Pray it's that simple and not an internal failure. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.